Hey and welcome to another Silent Hunter 5 tutorial. Um, I did some tutorials more than a year ago, I think. It was about the Harbor Pilot and the uh, real navigation. And uh, I promised more or less, or I said I will do some more on the attack disc and on some torpedoing techniques. I haven't done that, I have to apologize for it. Uh, it was quite a long while. Uh, my game became unstable and I wasn't playing Silent Hunter for a long while then. Then I had to reinstall my whole computer and it took me a while since I got interest again in playing Silent Hunter 5 but now I installed it again and I have put on the uh, Wolves of Steel mod. That's the mod I'm playing my current campaign with and I was approached by some of the YouTubers and they asked me if I would do the uh, more or less promised videos on uh, torpedoing techniques and the attack disc. So here I am, I said I will look into it and I uh, and I found some interest again when reading into it and trying out different techniques. So here is now the first video of this new series uh, that will primarily be about uh, targeting techniques. Uh, the first one will be about the attack disc. I was asked specifically about the attack disc and uh, I think it's a good thing to start with that because you will use it in some of the detail of the uh, the techniques that I will describe in more detail later. Uh, there are several ways you can access the attack disk. One way is from the map view. Uh, I don't know which mods you are running. I'm running Wolves of Steel and there I have the attack disk. I think the most common mods that you will run will have the attack disk. If this is not the case, you will need to go to Subsim or some other Silent Hunter forum to find out what mods to install to actually get the attack disk. Uh, I have to say as well that it's just very basic techniques that I will show. Uh, there's a handbook written by some other Silent Hunter user um, that shows some more techniques. I will post a link of that to that handbook in the description. Uh, so if you're interested in reading more about the attack disk, you can look into that. But uh, once again, that's not my work. That's the work of another Silent Hunter community member. So if there's more questions, more specific questions, it's best to go to Subsim or some other Silent Hunter forum and ask there. So the attack disk from the map uh, view, we have these four buttons on top here. One of them is the attack disk. Uh, and that is the second from the left. If you click on that, you will get a view on the attack disk, you can use it on the map. Or, if you are on looking through one of the periscopes, attack or observation periscope, or as well the USO, and you have all your dials and gauges for the TDC, you will have as well the attack disk available here by pressing on the attack disk button. Moment. And now we see that we have the disk, it has consists of several discs and some pointers and uh, the outer one that we see is called the relative bearing disc. This presents the represents the relative bearing of our submarine. It is slightly strange that we have 180 on top and 0 on the bottom and as well if we arrange the courses on this disc we put it such that uh, more or less 180 degrees is in front of us and zero is on our back but this will become more clearer during the course of this video. Then we have the next disc, the grey one here that I'm rotating right now. This is the compass disc. It's just a compass rose going from north around to south and back to north with uh, 360 degrees and the inner circle is the reciprocal of the compass disc. It means it's just it's turned by 180 degrees. We see we have 0 and 180 on the same position here and we have north, so that means as well 0 and 180 here. So outer one is a normal one, the inner one is the reciprocal. And then we have this disc, the red and green one. It has as well a pointer up here that we can align with the compass disc and that one is the, atta the target disc. So this is more or less for finding, getting information on target course, angle on bow and such. Uh, those three discs are the main ones that you will use. There's two more pointers or discs. One is the attack course disc and one is the lead angle disc. 
uh, I only use them more or less to compare the other discs to get a clear reading of them. There are some techniques where you use them, so, but uh, once again that's described in the handbook and if you're interested in that I would recommend you read it up there. Uh, you can e rotate each of the discs apart from the relative bearing disc that is fixed. It's always 180 degrees on top and 0 degrees uh, on the bottom here. Uh, you can what you normally have to do is that you align uh, the relative bearing with the compass disc to show your current course. You can do that by hand or you can engage this switch here and then the compass disc is coupled to the relative bearing disc so that you always have the correct reading of the of your course. For example here we have at the moment a heading of 271 and you see that as well here if we couple the two discs we see that the white marker here and the 180 mark is pointing to 271 which is our current course. For the purpose of this video I made some schematic drawings of the attack disc or better saying that is of the three main discs um, that are the relative bearing, the compass rows and the target disc relative bearing to the right, compass rows in the middle and target disc uh, to the left and uh, bear in mind that the real compass rows in Silent Hunter has two uh, scales this one has only one and the real one has the normal compass and the reciprocal of the compass combined in one disc and there's uh, some more pointers on the real disc as well. We have additionally the bearing and lat angle pointer or disc and we have the tech course pointer. I didn't include them in the sketch. Note as well that the real attack disc has a backside uh, where you can calculate the sign, time and speed and such things. Uh, as far as I know the historical one did not have that backside. It was only on the US uh, attack disc and uh, angle solvers that had this uh, additional backside. Uh, I rarely use it, so I won't talk about that particular side of the attack disc in this video or in any future videos probably. The attack disc is basically an angle solver. That means when you know your true course, you know the uh, bearing of the target ship and you know for example the course of the target ship you can use the attack disc to solve for the angle on bow of the target ship and likewise if you know the angle on bow of the target ship and your own course and the bearing of the target ship you can solve to find out the course of the target ship. In uh, this example and what I use it mainly for is to find the angle on bow of the target ship. So let's assume we are on a course of 315 with our submarine and we spot a target on a relative bearing of 330. Relative bearing in that sense means that it is the bearing relative to our submarine where the bow, the front of our submarine is 0 degrees and the stern, the back side of our submarine is 180 degrees. I put now the relative bearing disc and the compass disc around our submarine. The relative bearing disc such that 0 degrees on the bearing disc uh, shown here with the red cycle is uh, in front of us, so at the bow of our ship, and that 180 of the relative bearing disc is on our stern or back side of our submarine. And we put the uh, compass disc such that north is uh, pointing towards uh, the upside, and uh, as we can see here, uh, our true course of 315 uh, shown here in the blue disc corresponds to the position of zero on the relative bearing disc. What we now already can do is find out the target true bearing that means the bearing not in relation to our submarine but in relation to true north and we do that by comparing the relative bearing disc with the compass disc. We see the target on the relative bearing of 330 and if we look at position up on the relative bearing disc uh, shown here in the red circle, the compass disc at this position shown in the blue circle shows a value of 285. This means the target is on a true bearing of 285 degrees. But if you remember from the real target disc in Silent Hunter, 
the relative bearing disc is arranged such that 180 degrees points up. And it as well, if you couple the compass disc automatically with the relative bearing disc, uh, the course that our sub has on the compass disc will be put into the position of 180 on the relative bearing disc, shown here in this uh, example with the red and blue circles. This means that we are using the reciprocal of the bearing disc and not the true relative bearing disc. So this has some implications but will make our life easier later as you will hopefully see. One way to take this into consideration is to calculate the reciprocal of our relative bearing of the target. Uh, we can do that by subtracting or adding 180 uh, from or to the uh, relative bearing that we see the target. We have it on the relative bearing of 330. Subtracting uh, 180 means we get the reciprocal of the relative bearing of 105 and if we now s use the same technique as before by comparing the relative bearing disc and the compass disc we get the same result, a target true bearing of 285 degrees. Another way to work around this is to not use the normal compass disc but the reciprocal compass disc indicated by the R on the compass disc in this picture. If you now look up the relative bearing on the relative bearing disc shown by the red circle and compare it with the compass disc shown in the blue circle we get the true bearing of the target again with 185 and the target relative bearing of 330. So why is the relative bearing disc arranged as the reciprocal with 180 uh, in front and zero in the back and not the other way around as uh, the first metal picture of such a disc would give us. The easiest way to understand that for me I found is to imagine if one is sitting on top of the disc in the center looking outside or if one is on an object outside of the disc looking on an object that is inside the disc. For example in this image we are on the submarine uh, we are in the center of the disc and we're looking at another object that is outside of the disc. So we're using the compass disc, the normal compass disc with zero uh, north upwards and 180 south downwards and we get the real, the true bearing of the target of 285. So in this image we imagine ourselves on the target ship looking at the submarine. The submarine is in the center of the compass disc, not us and we have the submarine of a, on a true bearing of 105 which is the reciprocal of 285 and we see indicated by the blue circle that the indication of 105 on the compass disc is on the opposing side on the disc the same indication that we would get if we use the reciprocal of the relative bearing disc but the true compass disc. Now back to our example Let's assume we have found out the target course, which is 60 in this example. We put as well a compass disc around the target now. And uh, we can we put it such that uh, north or zero degrees points upwards. Uh, what we are interested in now is the angle on bow. That means the angle between the target course and the target relative bearing uh, from the target ship to our submarine. To do this, we put the target disc on top of the uh, compass disc around our target ship. And we arrange it such that 0 degrees on the target disc coincides with 60 degrees on the compass disc. That means 0 degrees on the target disc is pointing towards the course of the target ship on the compass disc. Now we can find the angle on bow by comparing the compass disc with the target disc. We need the true bearing from the target to the submarine which was 105 shown in the red circle here and we compare it to the position or the indications on the target disc which is 45 and on the green. That means the angle on bow is 45 degrees right. And now it becomes clear while the relative bearing disc is arranged as a reciprocal we do not need to calculate the true bearing from the target to the submarine first. We can simply look up the relative bearing that we see the target on 
which was 330 on the relative bearing disk shown here in the red circle and we see that on the compass disk shown in the blue circle we have already the true bearing from the target to our submarine of 105 and that was the value that gave us the angle of bow of 45 degrees right. The reason is that the angle on bow is a value that is based on the ship's perspective. It's the angle from the ship's course, from the target ship's course to the line of sight from the target to the submarine. So therefore we have to switch into the situation of the ship and therefore we're switching the relative bearing disk from a normal one to a reciprocal one. We now combined the two disks from the image before to one single disk as we have in the submarine. Only one relative bearing disk, one compass disk and one target disk. But the situation stays the same. The Ubert course is set to 315 by arranging the compass disk with the 180 position on the relative bearing disk. We have the target relative bearing of 330 which gives us the true bearing from the target of 015 if we look at the same position and if we switch over to the opposite side so going into the reciprocal of the compass disk we get a target true bearing of 285. We set the target disk such that uh, 0 degrees on the target disk coincides with the target course of 60 degrees on the compass disk and from the target relative bearing of 330 you can read the angle on bow of the target ship of 45 degrees right. Of course the attack disk in Silent Hunter is not arranged such that north on the compass disk points upwards but 180 degrees on the relative bearing disk points upwards. But this is just a simple rotation. The values on each disk and the technique stays the same. We we'll now repeat the whole exercise of the example before by only using the attack disk as it would be given to us in Silent Hunter. We get the values announced to us, that means we know our own submarine's course, we know the relative bearing of the target and we know the target's course and we try to find out the angle on bow. And uh, this initial state of the attack disk is simply 180 on the relative bearing disk pointing upwards, 0 degrees on the compass disk and 0 degrees on the target disk. Our submarine is running on a course of 315, so we rotate the compass disk until 315 is in the same position as 180 on the relative bearing disk, as indicated here by the blue circle. We know that the target's course is 60 degrees, so we rotate the target disk until 0 degrees on the target disk is at the same position as 60 degrees on the compass disk as indicated here with the blue circle. We then can look up the true bearing from the target to our submarine by comparing the target relative bearing on our relative bearing disk indicated by the red circle with the indications on the compass disk indicated by the blue circle and we get a true bearing from the target to our submarine of 105 degrees. And finally by comparing the relative target bearing on the relative bearing disk of 330 with the indications on the target disk itself, we get the angle on bow of 45 degrees right.